Good morning. The last video I did was on dealing with moisture and wood. And today we're going to talk about how wood dries. For me it's very difficult and a little frustrating to pack everything that is so important into one video about understanding wood. Well, I'm going to show you a book, Understanding Wood, by R. Bruce Hoadley. This is an excellent book on wood. It covers everything from moisture content to wood identification and would be a great asset to your library. Now let's take a look at how wood dries. Now I'm an old school teacher and whenever I step in front of a group of people, students in particular, or if I'm doing a YouTube video, I try very hard to make sure the information I'm sharing with you is accurate and has something to back it up. And that's why, you know, I go to this book whenever I have a question about wood. You know, wood density, wood moisture. At the end of this video, I will show the proper way to mill bowls from a log to ensure success in rough turning a bowl. How to cut wood up. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I've learned over the years and I think are not just theory, but I think they're, they're absolute facts based on a lot of research, not that I've done, but other people. I want to show you a couple of my projects. Um, 2007, I purchased a walnut tree. And yes, walnut does grow in Wyoming. It was an enormous tree, about 40 inches at the base. And whenever I get a, a tree, especially a brand new species that I've never turned before, I do an experiment. I turn a, a, a thin bowl maybe and see how it reacts. And this is one of the bowls I did very early. In fact, it's dated 2007, okay? And very thin. Uh, I probably put it away in shavings. But as you can see, that bowl has warped all over the place, but it hasn't cracked. And that's the key. That's one of the keys. Here's another maple bowl that I turned. And usually I'm going to rough turn these kinds of bowls and put them away and let them dry, put them back on the lathe, and re return them. This one I turned thin. So it's probably um, oh, an eighth of an inch thin all the way through. As you can see, that bowl has warped, but it hasn't cracked. Again, that's a really important thing to remember when you're churning wood. Now let me show you a rough turn bowl that's waiting to be finished turned. Now in that last video I did on dealing with moisture and wood, I showed you one or two of these ash bowls that I have rough turned several months ago. And as you can see, here's the pith. Now that's the orientation of this, of this uh, bowl blank. Okay, it grew in the tree like this. This is the very center of the tree. That's the pith. Okay, and as I mentioned, that warps away from that pith. And I'll show you some examples of wood is going to do better drying if you get the pith out of the wood. Now, being successful with any woodworking or wood turning project depends on understanding wood and understanding how it dries out especially when you're working green wood. I love turning green wood. I'd much rather turn a piece of wet wood that's gonna just get me all wet than anything else. It's just a, it's a hoot and I really enjoy that. The other day I showed you this bowl that had a weak spot right here where the pith is or was, and this just really broke out. And if you can look at this cut off of a log, this is some box elder. Right here is the pith. Okay, and I'm going to just take a screwdriver. Now, what do we have here? This is awesome. I love doing this. This is a great lesson. This little round piece right where the pith is, this is really the, the sapling of that tree. You know, if we can count the growth rings and go back whenever that was, 20 years or something, that was the original sapling. And for some reason, this makes this area very, very weak. Another reason for causing weakness in this area is the very tight radius of the growth rings in this area of the tree. Okay, and oftentimes uh, I've got a wood stove, and as I'm looking through my wood pile, I often see this pith this part of the tree in this condition 
with, with this pith just falling out. And there's my bowl right there. That's the one I was referencing. That's why that's weak. So if we can cut below that line when we're milling that bowl blank, the better off we're going to be. So that's cool. I'm going to save that just for whatever. Now, now this actually was some turning wood. This is a piece of box elder and that's the outside of the log. And you can probably see how that's splitting. So this is the inside of this, uh, this piece of wood that was sitting out outside my shop and I just didn't get to that wood. So the outside of this log is all starting to split up. This was the end. It was not sealed. This is the inside. And you know what? I could turn this wood right here. However, these checks and these splits are going back into the wood this way. How does a piece of wood dry out? Well, if we can put this back together, okay, the very center of this log is the wettest part. It's dry out here on the bark. In fact, you can see the bark is pulling away from the wood, probably in that cambium layer um, where the bark grows in one direction and the wood grows on the inside. However, the inside stays wet. Now, if we have a piece of wood like this and we cut the tree down and we put it out in our wood pile and we seal both ends, can we wait 10 years or 15 years and let this dry? No, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be all cracked up. By the time it's dry all the way through, we're not going to be able to turn this. So if we look at this piece of wood, it's still uh, a full log. And I have had this in my shop, I bet, for three or four years. The ends are sealed very well, and I'm not getting really any checking on that. Um, it's, it's held together pretty well. However, on this end, you can start seeing some checks. So I do need to get to this piece of wood. So what are the options in completing a successful wood turning project? I don't want to turn a bowl. Well, I'm not going to wait for this thing to dry in 15 years. It's just not going to work. And that's the imp most important thing I can tell you. You've got to rough turn this like this, let this dry. This is still wet. I guarantee you this is still wet. Uh, October 2013. It's been sitting there for only four months. And I guarantee you that the surface is drier than the inside of that. Okay, so I may re-true that up and let it sit for another two or three months, check the moisture content. The other option is to turn it completely wet, like the first couple little bowls I showed you at the beginning of this video, that I, I turned completely from the wet stage to a finished product. You have to turn those really thin. Now, one of the questions I got the other day was how thick do you leave the wall of the bowl when you're, when you're drying it, okay? The rule of thumb is the wall thickness needs to be 10% of the diameter of the bowl blank, okay? That is nine inches. So a little less than an inch, if I leave that too fat, it's gonna crack. Wood dries out and it wants to move, okay? Um, we can go back to this piece right here. There's two things that happen when wood dries out. It loses moisture and it is affected by the internal stress that's in that piece of wood. Now, if I keep my, my log whole, there's a lot of stress in this piece of wood, okay? So when I rough turn it like this, I'm eliminating some of that internal stress, but it's still going to dry out and move. And you'll want it to move, because if it moves and doesn't crack, then you're being successful. This little bowl that I turned probably six, seven years ago, and I made the, the wall thickness too thin. All right, now hopefully you can see how much that's gone oval. This is end grain, this is end grain, okay? So that's the direction a bowl will warp. Now, if I were to put this back on my lathe, try to make a bowl out of this, I would lose 
this wall and this wall over here. Now I have this little warp bowl set on top of a circle that I have drawn on a board to show just how warped it is. Okay, I want to keep this. I think it's just cool. It's a great teaching aid. So rough turning a, a bowl blank is not that easy. It's a, a little bit of science and it's a lot of art. I was watching a video by Carl Jacobson and he had uh, a log and he cut it in half and he made the very important point that wood will dry out on the end. Okay, this is end grain. It's very porous. Okay, and that's the first place moisture is going to leave this piece of wood. Um, not so much from this area here. So you seal the ends of these. If I can't get to this in a month or two or three, I'm going to seal the ends really, really well. I've got some stuff I get from craft supplies and hopefully you'll get a little moisture loss from the bark area and that's not prone to cracking like the end grain is. So that was a good point that Carl made on, uh, on drying wood. This is a piece of wood that I milled up. It's some ash and I often take some wet wood and I just run it through my bandsaw and it looks something like this. I've got big boards and small boards and this piece of wood is not exactly quarter sawn. You know, the, the grain is going kind of diagonally through there but I don't have any really tight grain. I don't have the pith still in this piece of wood. This has been sitting in my shop for at least two years. This is another way to be successful in drying wood. Now I'm going to leave you with a drawing of a cross section of a log and really the best way and probably the only way to successfully mill out a couple bowl blanks from a log. Okay, there's the pith right in here, the very center of that tree. So we're looking down on the tree from up above. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right here. And I'm going to cut right here. And in a perfect world, I want a, a big log. I want a 20 inch log or so, so that when I cut this out, I'm going to, I'm going to totally remove this area right here get the pith out. So I've got a bowl blank here and I've got a bowl blank there. This is the bottom of the bowl where I'm going to put my tenon right there and if I've got a really large piece of wood I can core a couple more bowls out of that. Now this piece of wood right here is kind of like the tenderloin out of a cow. What? Well this is quarter sawn wood. Okay the grain is going pretty much directly across this and this little piece of wood is going to make a nice little platter or bowl or something that you can turn out of that and it's going to be the most stable part of the tree. Okay, that piece right there and that piece right there. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. See you next time. Thanks.